I don't like having to tie up a couple of elderly folks. But you're both important witnesses. We can't have the two of you running away or getting shot. Well, we barricaded the back door and most of the windows with furniture as best we could. Oh, I'm telling you right now, if somebody really wants in, it's not gonna keep them out for long. It's better than nothing. In that case, let's head down to the first floor and defend the entrance. Do you have any experience using a gun? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. I'm coming with you. I have to go down there too. I'm not about to let anything happen to you. You need to live through this so you can tell the world what you did to all those children. Listen, Vim. You stay in here and keep this door locked. But, Mr. Grimmer, what if something happens to you? There's nothing to worry about. A really strong friend of mine is coming to help us. Do you mean it? Yeah, of course I mean it. Whenever I get into a really bad scrape, he shows up just in the nick of time. He never lets evil go unpunished. They call him the Magnificent Steiner. Fast as you can. <laughs> Head north. Just stick to the path. Huh? I'm pretty sure most of the children in town have made it safe out of here by now. Go. Follow those kids. But what if there are still some near the center of town? I gotta check. Don't worry. Leave it to me. You just get your group to safety. Uh, all right. Uh, hold on. One more thing before you go. Do you know a man by the name of Franz Bonaparte, or maybe Klaus Pope? Pope? Well, of course I do. He's the proprietor of the Hotel Verstep. Just remain calm. I'm not going to hurt you. I... I ran away as fast as I could. But there's dead bodies everywhere. I don't even know where to go anymore. And where did you run away from? His room. He's giving orders from in there. I heard him. I heard. Heard who? Him, Roberto. He kept leaving and coming back, and every time he'd take a shower, and change his clothes, because they were covered in blood. So where can I find this Roberto? <laughs> the fourth floor of the Hotel Bergbach. I thought... I thought he was a nice guy who'd take me away. I didn't know. <laughs> Listen to me. A group of survivors are holed up in the Hotel Versteck. Can you get there by yourself? Come on, you can't just sit here. I can't. Dr. Tenma. Inspector Lunge. My trip into imagination has finally become reality. With your sudden emergence, Dr. Tenma, my journey comes to an end as the realities of the situation demand my attention. From here on out, I'll be acting as an officer of the law. I'm finally back on the job. Uh, 
Take this girl to the Hotel Versteck. You'll find who you're looking for. A certain picture book author. Franz Bonaparte, how'd you know? <laughs> Inspector Lunge, where are you going? I told you, back to work. Perhaps we can talk later. There are many questions I want to ask. Dr. Tenma. I'm sorry. Talk to me, Nina. What's going on? My memory... It's trying to come out. One of my most painful memories. One of your most painful memories? It's horrible. I don't ever want to remember again. This scene keeps replaying in my mind. If Johan has brought this memory to light... Show yourself. Please, don't shoot me. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm not one of them. I'm a local, I swear. I want the man in charge. Where is he? Huh? <laughs> Where's Roberto? I'm not asking you again. to stand up. Come on. Dead people everywhere. I can't take it anymore. I feel like I'm going crazy. I can get you to the hotel, but you need to be brave for just a little while longer. I can't do it. Just open your eyes! She's your wife, isn't she? You need to leave. She's already gone. You can't stay here, it's too dangerous. You need to get to safety, I can help you. You wanna help me? Give me your gun so I can shoot the bastard who did this! Damn you, give me the gun! He destroyed our happiness in an instant, so I'm gonna go kill him! Is that what your wife would have wanted? Your wife would want you and your child to live through this. Well, isn't that right? <laughs> I'll take you to a path that cuts through the northern woods. It'll lead you to safety. The hotel's too far away. At least go with this man to the woods. Uh, I'm not moving one inch. All right. I'll be back for you. Stay right where you are, okay? <laughs> Do 
It sure is quiet. So, uh, these guys shooting at us, they're not really here because of that jackpot me and the missus won, are they? Afraid not. <sighs> Honestly, these last couple days felt like something out of a bad dream. What the hell's the matter with me anyway? I win it big in the lottery, and the first thing I do is run out and buy a bunch of these awful things. A normal life is what's best of all. Sounds pretty good. I gotta let the wife know the good news. You know, about this not being our fault. Honey, can you hear me? Guess what? Mr. Haydick! I've got you! My wife, is she all right? Damn it! It hurts. <laughs> this way, quickly. It's coming from the building across the street. Is there a basement in here? There is a cellar underneath the kitchen. Are you hanging in there okay? Me? What about you? My dad's doing this. It's all my fault. I didn't buy him a bottle, and now he's going crazy. Your dad didn't shoot anyone. But you don't know him. It's just like when he hits me every day. Cause I make him mad. Come on, Vim. You know your dad wouldn't do anything this bad, don't you? I can end this. All I have to do is go outside. It'll be quick. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you again. You don't get to die today, that's final. I'll tie you down if I have to. You wouldn't be the first one today. You stay here. Let me deal with this. But, Mr. Grimmer... Remember, Vim. When things are at their worst, the Magnificent Steiner will show up and save the day. I saw a few cases of that during my experiments years ago. By exposing a child to excessive stress from anger or sadness, a child will manifest a different personality. Those children were exceptionally violent creatures. Almost all of them took their own lives. I'm surprised that you haven't. I'm alone, and I'm unarmed. A minute of your time, that's all I'm asking for. You're not here because you want to be, isn't that right? Who put you up to this? East Germans from the old days, the former secret police, I don't care! Look at me, I'm just a nobody from nowhere! Are any of you listening to a single word I'm saying? Don't just follow orders! You're men, not machines! In your hearts, you know what's right! The answer is sitting there waiting for you! Are you brave enough to look inside yourselves? Well, are you? I think you are. Who are you talking to? Huh? I was so frightened, but I made it over here after all. God, am I ever glad to see you again! tuned into the Magnificent Steiner every day, my face practically pressed to the TV screen. But I don't remember the final episode. Come on, let's go. Huh? No! 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 That weak young man in the show. I wonder if he ever realized Realized that his anger transformed him into the Magnificent Steiner. I wonder if that young man ever found happiness. <laughs> that young man. <laughs> 
I wonder, did he ever find it? Here we go. Just a little bit further and we'll be out of these woods. You came from Ruinheim, didn't you? How did you know? Something's happening in your town, right? A bunch of folks I'd never seen before showed up with weapons. Everyone in town started killing each other. Huh? You're not with those guys, are you? Calm down. We didn't come here to hurt anyone. When you were back there, did you ever happen to see a Japanese man with long hair? Wait, do you two know him? Then you did see him. Yeah, he was doing his damnedest to get these kids out of harm's way. He's still back there, making sure they all get to safety. When we split up, he said he was headed to the Hotel Versteck. <laughs> Nina, wait! I left my car at the beginning of the path, just outside the woods. Get any of those kids who need treatment to a hospital, and contact the authorities as soon as you possibly can! Hey, what are you doing? Are you out of your mind? You can't go back there! They'll shoot you dead! Maybe so. But that Japanese man is my friend, Kenzo Tenma. He needs my help. Now call the police before it's too late! The Hotel Versteck. figured you'd be coming. I'm not surprised. I got two in the building next door. Another one of them downstairs. And that one I threw out the window. Not bad for a day's work, huh? The magnificent Steiner appeared and did all this, didn't he? As a matter of fact, Steiner never did show up. I did it all on my own. I got angry and I killed four men with my bare hands. I need to treat those wounds. Oh, yeah. It almost slipped my mind. Take it. It's a letter. I got it from Inspector Lungay. He found it back in the Red Rose Mansion. You gotta... You gotta go help him. He headed to the Hotel Bergbach by himself. I'm not leaving you like this. I'm fine. It's nothing. A little rest won't fix. Where are my manners? I'd like you to meet Franz Bonaparte. <laughs> Mr. Grimmer! <laughs> Everything's gonna be all right. It's been pouring all day. But when it's sunny out, it's like a scene from a postcard. Wouldn't you agree, Dr. Tenma? I would. When the rain lets up, we should take Vim on a picnic. All right. With a bottle of old wine, the finest cheese money can buy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm crying. But it's not because I feel my life fading away. These tears are streaming down my face because I'm crying for my son. You can't just erase people's feelings. It's as if my emotions were lost somewhere hundreds of miles away. It's as if they were sent long ago in a letter that was always intended for me. So this is what true sadness feels like. It feels a lot 
like happiness. I think I figured out how the show must have ended. The magnificent Steiner. He probably became human again. Mr. Grimmer, please wake up. Mr. Grimmer, <laughs> Mr. Grimmer. <laughs> Unless I'm wrong, your name's Roberto. Oh, you're dead, Ron. I have no name. I'm sorry to hear that. As a police officer, you might say I take a professional interest in the name of the man who kills me. Such a good man. He fought to protect us at the cost of his own life. Mr. Grimmer. Dr. Tenma, where are you going? I can't stay here right now. You're going to help Inspector Lunge, aren't you? I'm going with you. I have a gun. The letter. I have the letter that Inspector Lunge left with Grimmer. Seems the Inspector found it, tucked away somewhere in the Red Rose Mansion. I've been watching you. I wanted to devour you whole. But instead, everything about you consumed me. When I was falling apart, how did I look to you? When I was falling apart, the object that you gave me, you left me. You left me a beautiful jewel. The twins who look as if they were blessed with eternal life.
And the most sinful deed is to take away a person's name. Let's get your name back. I'll give you your name back. Your name is Anna. Right now, I'm just sad. 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 You wrote this letter, didn't you? Unexpectedly, I fell in love with the twins' mother. My whole way of thinking changed in an instant. And so, I killed everyone who knew about her. Who knew about the twins. Who knew about the experiment. That is all. Stop playing games. Tell me now, who are you? That gunshot wound will prove fatal in time. Answer me if you want to live. Where the hell is Johan? <laughs> Why do you go to such lengths for him? Exactly what is your connection to Johan? You're a sad and pathetic man, Inspector Lunge. The brilliant BKA agent sniffing around this little town. Without a friend in the world. On a long vacation without his police badge. <clears throat> Dug too deep into a Senate member's dirty laundry, didn't you? Your boss has left you out to try. Chasing Tim is all you've got to live for, and now you're obsessed with it. You did your homework. You know me very well. Oh, there's more. Your wife's living with another man. <laughs> very happily, I might add. Your grandchild thinks that your wife's new man is his grandfather. The little boy's starting to talk now, and he says, Grandpa, my dear Grandpa. Shut up. You must be dying to see him. Shut up. He's a charming little fella. They grow up so fast. Shut up. You've never even met him, have you? Shut up! <laughs> You've really lost your edge, Inspector. Uh, the old Lungay would never have fallen for that one. is to Johan? I'll tell you again, I have no name, no country, and no memories. The farthest back I can remember is going from the orphanage to my job. <coughs> That's all I knew. Then one day in walked Johan. And that's when he awakened the one powerful memory I'd held on to. The only memory of my childhood. Tell me, what was his real name? He said he didn't know. He didn't know his own name? Mm-hmm. He was in an orphanage. He forgot everything, except the name of his friend, a boy he was close to, who was also living in that place. Are you sure about this, Vim? He forgot his own name, but remembered his friends? Yeah. His friend liked to draw, and he liked bugs, but he hated killing them. 
so he would release the bugs from the cages that had been used to trap them. He even told me the boy's name. He said it was Adolf Reinhardt. And he loved the hot cocoa that was given to each of them once a week. Johan came to me that day at work and offered me a nice warm mug. It reminded me of my childhood, the only pleasure I'd had. I remembered I loved the hot cocoa they gave us once a week at the institution. If only all of this rain would wash everything away. The fear, the evil, and sadness. But it seems the opposite happened. Everything flared up instead. And grows more powerful as the rain continues to pour. Just like then, it was raining like this on that day. We begin with our top story. Mr. Liebert, former head of commerce in East Germany, has fled with his family to the West. We go live now to Dusseldorf. I'm here in Dusseldorf, where the East German trade commissioner who fled to the West appeared before the press yesterday along with his family. You're a refugee as well? Yes, from Czechoslovakia. And you say you know everything about them? Let me see them. Even if it's only for an instant. Just their sleeping faces. That night, something tragic occurred. There appears to be one survivor, a girl. A man and a woman are dead. A boy is in critical condition. Where's the patient? Blood pressure 72 over 50. His pulse is at 137. The bullet entered through his forehead. <laughs> I couldn't fathom what in the world happened on that fateful night. No. Actually, I knew. I knew about everything. But I tried to escape. I shut down. I wasn't able to think about anything. I just fled. And then, I tried to draw them. The picture-perfect twins, surrounded by love and affection. However, no matter how hard I sketched, I couldn't capture it on paper. Because deep down, I knew only too well. I knew they didn't exist. The Hotel Bergbach, where the inspector went, is up ahead of us, right? That's right. Let's go. Be careful. They could be aiming for us. I... I'm guilty. I'm the one who created the monster. And I brought that monster back to life. I'm the one who saved him. This isn't gonna kill you, is it? I don't have that much strength left in my right hand. I was shot by Dr. Tenma in a library in Munich. It would have been so easy to kill him right there and then. But I couldn't because it wasn't part of the plan. You see, Dr. Tenma is the one who's to be left. He'll be the only one left, and he'll be all alone. He'll die alone, slowly, sadly, and without a name. All part of Johann's master plan. Dr. Tenma will be the one to be given a glimpse of what Johann saw. You know something? I want to see it as well. And I will. 
Tragically, you will not, Inspector Lunge. Sadly, you will die. This is also <laughs> Johan's master plan. <laughs> His master plan? According to the heart drive inside my head, his master plan doesn't add up. Answer me now. Where the hell's Johan? Unbelievable. It looks like a war zone. Johan isn't here. How do you know that? He's somewhere else, observing all this. For him, it's like watching a line of ants. Well, let's take a look inside anyway. Tenma was headed here too. Hello? Is anybody here? I'll look upstairs. Hmm? <laughs> A little boy? Stay away! <laughs> Easy. It's all right. We're friends. We've come here to help you. Look, I'm not holding anything. See? It's all right. Uh, what? Are you the girl in the drawings? Drawings? What do you mean? There's a whole big pile of drawings, and you look exactly like the girl in them. A big pile of drawings? With a boy who has the same face. Bunch of drawings of twins. Where are they? Where did you see them? <laughs> Tell me where you saw them! Um, the, that big hill south of here. They're in the vampire's house. Hey, anybody seen him? Anybody seen my son? Hey, where'd my boy Vim go? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's dead. The devil did all this. The devil! The devil has come to this town! Well, it sure doesn't look like there's anybody here. You're thinking that just before we arrived, Johan was standing there, doing what you're doing right now. The same drawings over and over. They all seem to be attempts to draw you and your brother, but they're all unfinished. Unfinished drawings of gentle, smiling faces, but... Did Franz Bonaparte really draw all these? What must he have thought when Johan saw them? Welcome. I'm back. Welcome home. I'm back. Welcome home. I'm back. Welcome home. I'm back. Welcome home. Nina? I saw... something frightening. Something... very frightening. A whole lot of people died. The Red Rose Mansion. Every, everyone in that room was drinking wine and then... And then they... They collapsed, writhing in agony, piling on top of each other! I'm 
sorry. Why are you apologizing to me? Because at that time... The two of you... had to keep on living. The two of you had to live. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Please... Please don't cry! 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 Nina! Nina, are you... Johan... He was crying. Go on. He was right here. He was in this room right before we arrived. All alone. Crying the same as he did back then. Back on that rainy night. If only I hadn't shot him. able to forgive him instead. Maybe it wouldn't have gone this far. All these innocent people wouldn't have had to die. I don't know. It might already be too late by now. But it's time. Do you know where Johan is? He's gone into town. To end this once and for all. Everybody, everybody's dead. The devil did all this. The devil! The devil has come to this town! Listen, I'm gonna go in first, all right? You come in behind me and cover my back. Our one and only priority here is saving Inspector Lunge. Of course. Dr. Tenma! Him? What is it? What are you doing out here? Dr. Tenma, a lady who came into the hotel was looking for you. Who was it? She was heading up to the vampire's house, and she looked just like one of the twins from the drawings I saw up there. Drawings of twins? Nina. Nina, I've always wondered what name she would have. Did they call her Nina? Was that the name they gave to her? Yes, Nina, Nina Fortner. It is a wonderful name. It's really important to cherish your name. That's what you always told me, Mr. Pope. Did you see my dad? I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen him? Listen to me, Vim. We have something very important to do here. But when we're done, we'll help you look for him. My dad wouldn't kill anyone, would he? Dear boy, you know your father isn't that kind of person? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now go hide in that store across the street. <laughs>
Take Vim and find some cover now! Well, we finally meet again, Dr. Kenzo Tenma. Let's die. You and me together. Let's die. Wait! Run far away from here, as far away as you can. People can become whatever they want to be. You are beautiful shining jewels, both of you. And that is why you mustn't ever become monsters. I 
have to see it now. The scenery for a doomsday. You can't see it now. You are not able to. Vim! Get back! are created equal. That's why I came back to life. But you finally come to realize it now, <laughs> haven't you? Only one thing's equal for all, and that is death. for a doomsday. just cannot be undone. There's no turning back. Dr. Tenma will shoot me. <laughs> Isn't that right, Dr. Tenma? Isn't that right? Stop! You have to do it. Tenma, no! It was the devil. The devil has come to this town. He killed everybody who lives here. That's Vim. No. That's my son. Stop. What? 
What the hell is that? It's a... It's a monster! What the hell is that thing? Get away! Stop right now! Stop! You get away from my son! The situation here is under control. We've secured the east side. Provide aid to any residents you can find who are still alive. This is terrible. Are there any survivors left? My DNN news crew and I have finally been able to enter this remote, rain-drenched area by taking a route through the hills south of here. We bring you this shocking live report. The entire populace has been annihilated in what looks to be wanton massacre. What could have happened in this quiet little southern German town? Who is responsible? Yes, as I said, we have one person in custody at this time, and he's our primary suspect. Herbert Canal, page 38, says he's currently unemployed. My dad! Yes, he's admitted his crime. Said he shot a young man. My dad only shot him because he was trying to protect me! He appears to be a severe alcoholic, and by his behavior, I'd say he's quite drunk. The reason he gave for his actions? He said there was a monster with seven heads and many horns that was attacking his son. It's really hard to make any sense out of his statements. Huh? Oh, hey, can you copy that? Oh. Damn it. Cut off again. It's as I said. I've already told you what happened here. Yes, I know you did, but I'm having trouble understanding it. You said a young man named Johan destroyed this entire town in order to commit suicide? Please, Dr. Gillen, run this by me one more time so I can better comprehend it. It's a long story, it'll take a while. And after I'm done, you still might not fully understand it. I was at the Hotel Versteck. We found a wounded police officer in one of the rooms there. How bad is he? Well, I don't think there's any danger to his life, but he seems to be delirious. Damn it all! Isn't there a single officer in this town who can explain what happened? Yes, right here. Huh? I know everything. And you are? Inspector Lunge of the BKA. I'm afraid I don't have my ID. For confirmation, call headquarters. Roberto is dead. Essentially, he's the one responsible for what happened here. I tried to finish him off, but he lost consciousness. I turned around to head for the stairs, but when I did, I suddenly heard his voice coming from behind me. In the next instant, I was hit on the back of the head and I blacked out. But just as I was passing out, he said, I still can't see it. The scenery for a doomsday. We'll want to hear more after you receive medical treatment. <laughs> Stop, Stop crying. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. Excuse me. I need to get both your names. Hey, Nick. I live on Earth Street, and this is my wife, Franca. Can you prove your identity? Yes. Huh? What is it? Dear, what's wrong? No. I can't find the lottery ticket. I thought I had it tucked away in my vest pocket. I've got to go back and look for it. Uh, honey, wait! I dropped it somewhere. That must be what happened. Honey, don't go! It's all right! We're going to be fine without it. Being alive is plenty. We still have each other. That's more than enough.
Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I still need some ID. Hmm. Just take your time. I'll come back a little later. Well, let's see. Any other survivors around here? Ah, there are two right there. Excuse me, folks. I need to see some identification. Search every building. There might still be survivors inside. Uh, got a minute? Yeah, what is it? I might be wrong, but... Uh, I can't believe it. He's breathing, but will he live? Well, it's hard to say. He's got a serious head injury. Even if we had a really good neurosurgeon on hand... You do. He's right here in town. Huh? Get him, quickly. Excuse me, there's something I'd like to ask. You couldn't be, could you? You are him. You're that doctor, aren't you? Dr. Tenma! <laughs> You're Dr. Tenma, aren't you? Well, uh, I need you to come with me right away. Hey, wait a minute! Inspector Lungay of the BKA is asking for you. Huh? <clears throat> Look, he sent me to get you because we have a patient in critical condition who needs your help. Listen, son, we need to take your dad away in order to ask him some questions. My dad would never hurt anybody. He was only trying to save me. I'm sorry. Dad! I want to forgive him. I really want to do that. Tenma, you weren't wrong, you know. Not then. And you won't be now. Let's begin the operation. From Mount Olympus, Zeus commanded his mortal subjects to live off the land. They obeyed, and... Stop, Carl. Your recitation is so stilted. Sorry, Father. 
I guess I was trying to be careful. But you have improved. When you first came, I thought to myself, why in the world did such an unimpressive student show up here? Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to him? Uh -huh. What happened to that Japanese doctor? Actually, I've heard he's traveling quite a bit now, Father. I see. You know, I'd really like to meet Dr. Tenma one more time. Me too. So you've started a job? Glad to hear it. What kind of work are you doing? I'm an interior designer these days. Oh, I see. You do seem like someone who would have a very keen eye for arranging a home. I am working in homes, but it's a little different from what you're thinking. Hmm? Well, I specialize in kitchens. Ah. Funny, isn't it? A person like me who had never even stood in a kitchen before. Well, do you think you'd consider remodeling my kitchen sometime? Sure, why not? But with your expensive tastes, I bet your kitchens must come at quite a steep price. I like the best. <laughs> <laughs> You're not drinking anymore, are you? No, not a single drop. That's good news. Try to take your time and enjoy your life. Even if we rush, tomorrow we'll arrive at the appointed hour, same as always. You've always said that's what real happiness is, haven't you? That I have. Happiness. Huh. I can't forget his words. He said that he was happy just knowing I was waiting for him at the station. Ah, this is Martin you're talking about. People are such strange beings. The sad memories seem to just fade away until all a person's left with are the happier ones. People are certainly designed so conveniently. That's the whole reason we can keep on living. I'll introduce you. Meet Mr. Verdamon. He's a lawyer. He's the one who was ultimately responsible for clearing your name, Mr. Grimmer. I did do some research and found out as much as I could about you. You were one of the children from 511 Kinderheim. You worked secretly as an intelligence agent for the East Germans and traveled the world posing as a freelance journalist. After retiring, you used your skills to investigate human rights violations. Your duffel bag was bursting at the seams with papers and documents supporting your work. But in all your investigating, the one mystery you were never able to unravel was that of your real name. Wolfgang Grimmer. His name wasn't the only mystery. He left without telling us anything about himself. Inspector Lunge. I'm no longer an inspector, Detective Suk. Oh, well, sir, you haven't retired, though. I heard that you're a professor at the police academy. True. I have other priorities. I talk to my daughter more now. Well, email, technically. We lived our lives without knowing anything about one another. For years, we never discussed anything. Only one thing matters to people. It's all about how much we can communicate during our lives. Grimmer probably had lots of things he wanted to talk about over a good beer. You're going back to live in Dusseldorf? I am. The company that hired me is located there. Oh, I see. Hmm. Are you comfortable with that? After all, a lot of things happen to you there. There's no use in running away. 
You said what's important is to face the truth and move forward. Didn't you? Mm-hmm. Could you dispose of this notebook properly for me, Doctor? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. And best of luck. Please, call me if there's anything you need. Remember that Dr. Gillen and I are always here to help you. Dieter is too. And him. Do give him my regards. I will. The questioning of Dr. Tenma is still continuing, but the real truth is still unknown. Hmm. Inspector Lunge begins his testimony in the Tenma case. Could this possibly be the worst multiple homicide case in European history? Dr. Tenma is found innocent of any crimes. The police issue a formal apology to Dr. Tenma. The motive for these murders still remains unclear. Just who is the mysterious young man who's allegedly the real culprit? Munster University's medical school invites Dr. Tenma to become a professor. Dr. Tenma declines the school's offer firmly. Dr. Tenma joins the aid group Doctors Without Borders. The articles become shorter and shorter. <sighs> People are certainly designed conveniently, huh? Hey there, Dieter. You've grown a lot since the last time I saw you. Hey, Mr. Heckel. You've gotten a lot sleazier since the last time I saw you. I see you've still got that smart mouth, don't you? Sorry, I can't chat now. I've got soccer practice. Hold on. Hey, wait a second. Isn't Tenma back in town yet? He went and joined the MSF, because he's trying to make himself look good by doing something that doesn't make any money, and I can't even get a hold of him. What if he is back? Then I'll tell him to his face. The money he gave me for this job I'm doing for him isn't enough to cover all my expenses and labor. He asked you to do a job for him? He said he just needed me to look for somebody, and it sounded like an easy job. But I had to steal confidential stuff from the police. Who knows what'll happen if they catch me? Ah! <laughs> huh? Hey! Dieter! You give this bill to Tenma! And if he doesn't pay it, I'll see to it that he ends up an underground doctor again. Tell him I'm not kidding! We've been wondering where you went. You haven't stopped by for quite a while. I'm sorry, I've been out of the country lately. Here, I brought this back to share with everybody. My, my, you really shouldn't have. Oh, thank you. It's a beautiful day. So many of the leaves are photosynthesizing. That's life. All those countless genes. Are you familiar with Mendel's work? Yes. He's a famous geneticist. That's correct. I studied at the same university Mendel attended in his day. Brno University in the Czech Republic. It's down southeast in Moravia. It's a nice city. I'd like to see it someday. I thank you. You've come to visit me many times. I've so enjoyed the time I've spent with you. It's nothing. I feel wonderful today. 
I feel like I can talk about anything. No matter how terrifying. And you. You have something you want to ask me, don't you? Yes, I do. You're the mother of the twins, aren't you? Yes. I loved him so much. And he was killed by that man. It was all part of his experiment. I will never forgive him. Not for what he did. Even if I die, these children growing inside of me will punish that man for what he's done. He will definitely pay for everything that he's done to us. My hand. Don't let go of my... my hand. Who is the real monster? Who is it? Are the twins still? They're alive, aren't they? Yes. They're well. <laughs> I just remembered. You can tell me if you like. I might not remember this ever again, if I don't see it now. I gave names to both of those children. And I'll tell you what their names are. Yes, come in. Hmm. Well, as usual, I see that you are tardy. You are ten minutes late for our appointment. I'm sorry, Professor Kronecker. Uh, your apology is accepted. You know why I called you in today, don't you? It's about your senior thesis. Without a good grade on it, you will not graduate. Please come forward. Uh, yes. I know a lot has happened to you this semester. It's unrealistic to expect you'd be able to catch up with all the time you were gone. I understand. But I know that that's no excuse for my grades. You are quite right. Now, regarding the matter of your thesis... Superb. <sighs> this thesis is far and away the best paper written by any of my students in all my years of teaching. I'm quite proud of you. You have done an exceptional job. Thank you very much, Professor. What do you want to become? I want to become a lawyer, sir. Well, I imagine that a great many people will be saved by your skills. And now you may go. Yes, sir.
However, don't think you'll be allowed to be tardy for court, Fräulein Nina Fortner. Right. Yes, hello? Oh, hey, Dieter. Well, are you graduating? Even if you aren't, I'll stick with you. Well, it's good to hear that. The next time we're together, you can try and cheer me up. You can't fool me. I can tell you did from your voice. <laughs> Congratulations, Nina. Thank you, Dieter. But once I'm in law school, the real studying begins. Let's <laughs> celebrate. Come home already. I can't come home for at least another day. I've got work. And I've already made plans with my friends. What are you talking about? Tenma's coming back to see us. Nina? Tenma just called. He's heading abroad soon for the MSF, but first he's coming here. When? He said he'd be here by tomorrow, so you better hurry. Oh, Nina, about our plans for tomorrow? Sorry, won't be able to go. Tenma, I'm going to see Tenma. Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon. been sleeping ever since that day you were shot. Can you hear me? I had the opportunity to talk with your mother. She still loves you very much. She told me what your real name is, Johan. You have a name. the other one with us. This is an experiment. Now, which one are we going to take? Was my mother really trying to save me that day? Or did she confuse me with my sister? Well, which is it? Which one of us didn't she need?
Well then, I guess this is goodbye.